Okay, uh, VK3HOU here. We've got this radio that was landed on my desk. Um, we're going to see what we can find is a problem with it. Apparently it's got a fault. I don't know anything else apart from the fact that it has got a fault. I don't know if it powers up or if there's an issue with uh, transmit power, output, or receive, or reception. All I know is it don't work apparently. So we'll see if we can attempt to power it up anyway. So this is a uh, TX3620 by GME. TX3620 is a commercial radio. And uh, commercial radios will do uh, the, I think this is a higher uh, band. Uh, so it'll do 450 up to 512, maybe. Depends on, I don't have any other information. Depends on what band you're Turn that test set down, it's still warming up. Let's see uh, heating elements inside the test set. We've had the test set on for a little while now, so it should be just about ready to be used. Oh, let's see if we can power this up. Okay, our power supply. We've got the power supply set for 13 volts, roughly. Dead. So nothing comes on the power supply to say any current's been drawn. The radio just won't power up. We'll check the voltage on that cable. That cable should be fine, but we will check that. Select our voltage DC 20 and we have 12.74 that should be fine 12.74 is fine all right let's pull this thing apart and see what we can find Phillips Okay. Now, typical of the GME radios is they usually have a fuse, a fusible link on the PC board itself. And it's generally just a small track of PCB copper uh, that will burn out if you uh, apply the power the wrong way. The reverse protection diode. Uh, will actually cause the fusible link to blow before the fuse that's on the end of the power cable blows. Of course the fusible link's going to blow before the fuse does. Let's have a look. Take the speaker off. And the fusible link is around here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Ah, yep. There it is. Fusible links right there next to the power protection diode. Let me get some pointing device to show you. Just here, you got two pads on the PC board and usually you'll have a soldered bit of wire, a thin bit of wire soldered in between or sometimes it will actually be a PCB track that goes in between those two pads and that's the first thing to blow. So let's just get the multimeter and test that. Check it on ohms. We'll buzz it. And we go across one pad to the other pad. We have open circuit. Okay, simple fix. Hopefully, you've got a, you've always got find other issues maybe it was just a simple matter that they've reversed the power um, but there could be other reasons why that link can blow let's just hope it is a simple fix
get our soldering iron on. Bit of water on our sponge. Okay. Water on our sponge. And we just need a bit of wire. Only has to be a strand. It has to be a short bit of wire. And we'll try and solder that onto the board. See how we go. Okay, we'll tin our wire. So it's easier to tin the wire than trying to put the wire on and then try and solder it in place. So we'll just give our wire a bit of a tin. Like so. Put our wire across the jumper location. Cross one there. Cross the other there. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can get it to power up now. Oh, look at that. Power. Pop the speaker in, make sure we've got some sort of noise coming out of it. Okay. Scroll. Volume. Well, I don't know what's in this radio. In a commercial radio, I don't know how it's programmed up, but anyway, it's working. No, don't know. This is where we get our frequency counter. Let's find out what's in it. Put a, a dummy load on that. Dummy load to prevent. Oh, I'll just plug it straight into the test set. That's a dummy load. Okay. Alright. Frequency counter. that up. It might not even be programmed up, maybe there's nothing in it. Let 
registering anything on that. No, it's not transmitting. All right, let's pull the programming software out and see what's on that. Soon find out. Plug the microphone to plug the programming software into it. TX3620. Do it. up the GME software. Ah, now it's reading it. Alright, so the radio has been read. Yep. Now it's read the radio. Let's have a look at the channel data. It has a TX frequency of 472100Y. Uh, let's add a new channel. Normal channel. Let's put in the channel 20, channel 20CB, which is 476900. Receive. And transmit four seventy six nine hundred and okay and right to radio. Do we want to write? Yes, we do. Right. Okay, that has been written to, let's just unplug the programming cable, plug our microphone back in, transmit. Bring our um, DB attenuator in. <coughs> Test one, two, one, two. Four kilohertz deviation. Must be set for 25. Must be set for 25. Let's have a look. Uh, narrow. 25. Edit. Six. How do we change our band? Tradition, GX, Noble, Busy, Channel Lockout, Talk Around. Ah, oh, here we are. Channel Setter's narrow band is not an option that's normally ticked. 
channel seven uh, channel channel set as narrow band is not option ticked you have to tick it okay program program to radio right to radio radio as reading uh, writing rather and we'll go to our type of input level in wattage okay done let's see test one two Hello. Okay, so our deviation now is 2.2, which is correct for that band because it is 12.5 kilohertz spread on the channel bands and uh, it was set for um, non narrow band, which makes it a 25 kilohertz uh, uh, separation, uh, which puts it into 4, kilo, uh, four kilohertz deviation. And the four, ki four kilohertz deviation is um, incorrect for this band. Now it's at 2.2, 1212, and we've got just over four and a bit watts. Test one, two, one, two, one, two, test one, two, one, two. So we've got 4.89 watts at 2.16 kilohertz deviation and that is correct let's check the receive so we want to go to receive and we want to generate now we want to generate out of yeah out of the RF um, 476900 is correct. So we'll save. So we'll save him. Oh, it says busy. Oh, I haven't got the speaker plugged in. Okay, all right. Let's just take this back. Plug the speaker in. And this is the. Is the link that's repaired? I'll point that out. If I can get the pointing device. All right, uh, just here. That's the link we've just repaired between those two pads there. Okay, plug the speaker in. About minus 118 dBm, so that's about normal. All right, looks like this radio's got a clean bill of health.